is the new look KBC Prime. Tonight we have a comprehensive coverage for you, including the day's business. In business today, I have interesting numbers for you and statistics. How do the different genders use the phone? And I am Cynthia Nyamai. It's good to be back. It's a great honor to serve this nation. That story is coming up shortly and more international stories for you. And in the world of sports... Well, Team Kenya, that is said to represent the country in the upcoming Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan, of course, started camp uh, this evening. I'm Richard Munga. I'll be giving you all the details and, of course, more sports updates later on. Plus, live in studio, ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi. His eyes on the trophy again. What drives him? Please catch up with that interview on perspective a little later on. But first things first, top in this live broadcast. Their services still needed. Government extends interfaith council mandate to the end of the year to help in the war against the COVID-19 pandemic. We are going to ensure as a government that all the children who learned this Elimu scholarship shall go to boarding schools where everything is catered for. Seeking to leave no one behind, government offers a scholarship to 9,000 needy students in its 100% transition to secondary school policy. It's a new Monday. Kenya Broadcasting Corporation unveiling its new look in a momentous ceremony. And... Will 2022 be his glorious moment? Tonight, we host Musalia Mudavadi of the Amani National Congress. Thank you all for making time to be with us tonight. Of course, a very warm welcome to this live broadcast. Feel free to interact with us at KBC Channel One News. The hashtag to use, this is KBC. My name is Purity Museo. And I am delighted to be back. My name is Tom Boyer. Welcome back. Thank you very much. And thank you for making time to be with us. We begin our coverage tonight with our top story. The government has extended the time limit for the Interfaith Council for the national response to COVID-19 up to the 31st of 2021. And Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, Dr. Fred Matiangi, says the religious leaders have been key players in the fight against COVID-19 disease, hence the need to extend their mandate after expiry of the initial term, which was to be, end or to be the end of the month. That's right, and the move comes as government kicked off a seven-day nationwide sensitization campaign on the COVID-19 pandemic. Ruth Wamboy opens our coverage tonight with that report. Lord, that you may give them the wisdom. The Interfaith Council for the National Response to COVID-19 Limit, chaired by Archbishop Anthony Muheria, will continue executing its mandate until December that first this year and is urging religious leaders in the red zone counties to be patient as they work on modalities of reopening places of worship. So that we can continue this collaboration as, as, uh, as we work together. And we believe that we are going to, in a much more institutionalized manner, both ourselves at the Ministry of Interior and our colleagues at the Ministry of Health, we have developed a much more institutionalized way of now working more directly with the IFC as we go forward. We ask our religious leaders patiently to continue following these measures that have been given as we look into what we are able to accommodate and as we all know uh, there is also always the line of the live streaming chief administrative secretary in the ministry of health dr masi mongangi says the situation in the 13 counties remain critical and they are currently focused on managing spread of the new variants and one key thing of concern for us is the delta virus and so what we are doing in the 13 counties is that we've mounted a key surveillance response that is focusing on genomic sequencing. 
We have our labs there, particularly the Camry lab, that is picking samples so that we can establish um, the number of you know, Delta virus cases that may be there. And as the country continues to battle with the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has moved to scale up sensitization against the deadly virus in all the 47 counties. The campaign will be spearheaded by the State Department for Broadcasting and Telecommunication and will run for seven days between 21st and 27th of this month. The campaign starts today, June 21st, 2021, across the counties running from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. In Mombasa, the County Commissioner Gilbert Kitio has warned that the number of positive cases in the county are expected to increase during the month of July. We have done it the same sentiments were expressed in Kisi County, where the county commissioner Alan Machari decried the current coronavirus positivity rate in the county. That uh, we want to minimize uh, the people, con very many people congregating at the same time. So we are encouraging our people to operate without the market day, such that you can you can go to the market any day. In in Kirinyaga County, the awareness campaign caravan was flagged off by Deputy County Commissioner Daniel Ndege, who downplayed the misinformation surrounding the coronavirus vaccine. Vaccination is harmless and it is only aimed to protect. It reduces the severity of the disease. If you are vaccinated, you are able to resist the disease 80% immunity. Kenyans have been urged to continue observing the COVID-19 protocols as a nationwide campaign on the pandemic kicks off. Reporting for Prime Edition, I'm Ruth Kwamboi. Let's stay with that COVID update. The country has recorded 218 new COVID-19 infections from a sample size of 2,577 tested in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate is now at 8.5%. That number brings to 179, 293 total case load so far in the country. And in that same time, five people succumbed to the disease, one of them in the last 24 hours, while four are late deaths. This now pushes the cumulative death toll to 3,461. A total of 1,074 patients are currently admitted in various health facilities countrywide. Let's now move on to education. 9,000 bright but needy children are set to benefit from the 2020 Elimu Scholarship Program offered by the government. Among those are 3,000 from the urban slum areas across the country. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha was traversing the slums in Bangladesh and Changamwe in Mombasa County where 62 students are set to benefit from the program. With the four-month selection complete and students expected to report to the schools in August, the government's 100% transition policy will come in handy for bright but needy students. Through the Elimu scholarship that 9,000 needy students across the country will have their secondary school fees paid for by the government. Speaking in Bangladesh and Changamwe slums in Mombasa County, Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha stated that those selected for the scholarships are well-deserving cases. I have been thoroughly satisfied by the manner in which uh, the Equity Bank and the government have gone about uh, identifying the children. Uh, it has taken me quite, you can see I'm sweating because I've been going right deep into the, in, into the, uh, the, the residential areas of the children. The three children that have visited this morning are thoroughly deserving. Magoha recommended that those from the urban slums be enrolled in boarding schools. The government already pays everything for the day secondary schools which are 75% of the schools 
at the rate of a capitation of one and uh, 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 22,240 uh, 22, shillings per child. And basically what the child requires is to be either uniform or lunch money. So there's no need to have a good scholarship and you go to a, uh, a day school. Therefore, uh, we are going to ensure as a government that all the children who learned this Elimu scholarship shall go to boarding schools where everything is catered for including school uniform and transport. Another 9,000 children will benefit in the next school calendar with those not lucky advised to seek bursaries from the constituency kitty. Those who don't get should not uh, lose hope. We have the national CDF. Uh, for this area, the, the chairman is here. I'm just pleading with them to follow the same dynamics. We shall also get uh, another few scholarships from the banks like the, the KCB Foundation. Uh, Sa Safari Com Foundation, Absa Bank, and I've also approached uh, the, the Cooperative Bank, so that the children that just miss but deserve, we still need to have their list. Are we together here? Yeah, and we, we have no teeth to laugh. Those who can afford to pay fees will pay fees. We, we want to help those who cannot. For Prime Edition from Mombasa County, I am Anboru. Now, millions of Kenya Broadcasting Corporation viewers have taken to the social media to load the new KBC Channel One News and Programming revamp. Both the Twitter and Facebook were abuzz with us. Viewers welcomed the revamped newscast lineup of legends, among them Catherine Kasavuli, Tom Boyer. <laughs> Badi Musin and Pauline Shego. Well, that's right. KBC is tonight also rebranding its radio taifa as well as the English service radio brand. Furahia, Sura Mpia, Yadarubinia, Channel One. The Kenya Broadcasting Corporation Monday was the top trending item on Twitter ahead of the news and programming relaunch under hashtag This is KBC. Media legend Catherine Kasavuli caused national sensation with her return on television, capturing the attention of millions. Monday afternoon, Kasavuli was trending at number one on Twitter trends in Kenya. Musician Susan Owio says she is back on the screen. How beautiful. Now I have a reason to watch KBC News. Silas Dekakimba says our living rooms missed Catherine, Tom Boyer, and all. For this alone, I will tune back to This is KBC after a long, long, long time. Donald Kipkorin says, as a patriotic Kenyan, I'm fully rooting for the revamped KBC. In the U.S. and U.K., news anchors work till past the age of 80. Politician Millicent Omanga also took to her platform to express her joy to the KBC relaunch. Government spokesperson office on its Twitter handle welcomed the gesture, saying some credible and well-seasoned journalists will be joining the KBC team. KBC business news editor Stanley Wabomba and digital news editor Hunja Masharia on their Twitter pages said media and other professionals have had their talents and skills nurtured in KBC. KBC is also rebranding its radio taifa and English service radio stations. Legendary radio presenters, including John Karani, are back on the airwaves. J. Hu Ni Ungwana, done by Leonard Mambo Mutela, remains a favorite among Kenyans on social media. The radio stations have also brought forth competent news readers to draw you closer. And as the saying goes, old is gold. And this is KBC. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One. Great things to come ahead. Now, tonight on our opinion poll quiz, we are asking you what would make you vote? Would you vote for Musalia Mudavadi? Would you vote for Musalia Mudavadi as the Kenya's fifth? President, that's our opinion poll quiz question tonight. Absolutely, and you can send in your comments at KBC Channel 1 News and the hashtag to use tonight is this is KBC. That's right. The man himself on the other side of the studio, Masalia Mudavadi, ANC leader, live in studio when we return. Stay with us. <laughs> Wow.
What does this number mean to you? A pack leader? A winner? Or just a number? To us, it means freshness, boldness, vibrancy and heritage. That's why at KBC Channel 1, we make it easier for you to pop up your family entertainment to a fresh, exciting and colourful bouquet. Did you know education policy stands the test of time? irrespective of uncertainties in life like COVID-19. For peace of mind, go ahead and buy education insurance for your child's education in order to guarantee their future even in difficult times. Purchase an education policy early in your child's life to avoid the pressure that parents face when children join kindergarten, high school, college or university. Now you know. IRA. Promoting insurance. Protecting the insured. Bwana Motiso, pikipiki yako ndio hii? Uko shoni yangu. Hii pikipiki ni unakumbuka uniekelea the lowest unique bit yako ilikuwa ngapi? 18 shillings. 18 shillings. Na unajua kuendesha hii gari? Kidogo. Haya, kitoko yako shika helmet, kifungu yako Kujiunga na Quick Bid ni raisi. Enda kwenye M-Pesa, bonyeza Paybill, kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi bidha unayotaka na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 kama iradi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke niyo ununua. Quick Bid, bidha abora kwa bidi ya chini. always uh, compare the two HIV with vitiligo these people go through a lot their self-esteem is very low so we just wanted to raise their self-esteem and create awareness like they can be part of the community thank you so much you know uh, every team Bahati every fan that is watching me on grapevine you know this is Bahati Tena Island's most beloved the ghetto president and you're watching grapevine on KBC. He served as the country's last vice president in the Moi era as deputy prime minister during President Kibaki's first term, but out of government throughout President Uhuru Kenyatta's reign. Now, ahead of 2022 general election, his eyes are on the jackpot. What is his driving force, his guiding principle, his philosophy? Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi on The Perspective this Monday, only on KBC Prime Edition. The world has lost half of its wild animals in the past 40 years, according to the World Wildlife Fund. At this rate, the remaining species may become extinct if nothing is done and in good time. The mountain bongo is critically endangered and it's only found in Kenya with less than 100 individuals existing in, uh, in their natural habitat. When we take care of the forest, we are taking care of their habitat and we are also uh, sustaining the community livelihoods that are achieved through the forest. Join me, Purity Museo, this Monday and Tuesday at 9 p.m. as we explore how species unique to Kenya are fast disappearing and what efforts are in place to save the situation.
Welcome back. Well, as we had promised uh, on Perspective, we are fortunate to have our first guest, Honorable Musalea Mudavadi. Thank you very much, Moshmiwa, for honoring our invitation, really. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Yeah. I think uh, for me, it's also a big honor because uh, here you are coming back in a big way. Yeah. Uh, and I become your first guest. Thank you. Um, uh, who would ask for more? Exactly. And we're yeah. really delighted that, uh, that you came through. Now, let's just get straight into it. You, you have been in uh, politics for close to, I think, four decades, and you have served in uh, three administrations. You've had some wins, you've had some losses, but you keep going. You keep going on and on and on. And my first question is, what drives you? First of all, let me just uh, correct you. It's, uh, Yes, I've been in for about 30 years plus. Yeah. Uh, but I've only served two regimes. Uh, not three. Two regimes, thanks for that question. Yeah. Exactly, uh, yeah, two regimes. Yeah. That is the Moi regime yeah. and the Grand Coalition. Yeah. But uh, over a period of 30 years. Uh, roughly 30 Very years. long time. Um, what drives me? Yeah. Um, the passion for the country. Um, the desire to be able to be part of a positive influence. Uh, uh, in our country, um, I would like to see a robust economy. I would like to see uh, uh, a very responsive educational system, good health services, uh, a country that has the rule of law and respects the rule of law. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see uh, uh, an economy that is working for all people. And all thriving. Kenyans and thriving. Yeah. So this, this keeps on driving me yeah. to be part of uh, wanting to serve the people of Kenya. So against that background, mm -hmm. what would you frame as your guiding principles? Uh, honesty, uh, integrity, uh, dedication, um, the need to strengthen families because that is a very important uh, unit. Um, and ultimately, uh, to have an economy that allows the young man and woman uh, to put food on the table. To food put on the table. For their families. For their families. And in addition to that, Gandhiji, Mahatma Gandhi's mm -hmm. philosophy mm -hmm. was simple living, high thinking. Mm -hmm. What is yours? Well, I think uh, I've read a bit of uh, Gandhi, and I think uh, he came out very well. He's... Uh, a man whose philosophies you would appreciate. Uh, simplicity, uh, but depth in thinking and depth in, in reach uh, to the people. And by the way, this is also the Quaker value. Mm -hmm. I'm a Quaker, and, a Quaker. And, and Quakers basically believe in uh, simplicity mm -hmm. uh, as much as they have to serve uh, the country. Okay. Now, I remember during the launch of your autobiography mm -hmm. uh, was it soaring above the storms uh, yeah the storms of passion yeah your mom mm -hmm. described you as a very polite young man in your younger uh, days and uh, she told reporters about a story about how one day you came back home and found that your siblings had been shipped off to a faraway place some yes. place called Njoro yes to a boarding facility. Correct. And it bothered you. And, and these were your mom's words. You almost threw tantrums, and that was unlike you. I just want you to tell us more about that. Well, I was a young boy. <laughs> I was a young kid. Yeah. And uh, in a family, when you're born and you have your siblings with you, uh, that, is the, uh, that is your world, so to speak. Uh, so when you find that there's a dislocation, uh, a dislocation that I was not able to understand appropriately at that time because they were older and therefore they were going to boarding school yeah. um, and I was going to be left uh, at home. There's, there's a vacuum in the context of uh, uh, who will you mingle with. Yeah. Um, so to that extent, yeah. uh, I can imagine at that age yeah. I would have done what every other young child would have done yeah. uh, to express the displeasure uh, and the concern. Yeah. So if I did throw a tantrum, yeah. then it was in that context. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and she said that was really unlike you. 
Uh, yes, but you see, I was young. I was very young. I was an infant, basically. Uh, but nevertheless, the fact of the matter is that um, uh, uh, I have maintained my calmness uh, uh, over the years. I prefer to deal with issues logically rather than emotionally. Okay. Sometimes you can be emotional, all right. Yeah. But logic yeah. should be the prevailing. Uh, yeah. Uh, factor yeah. at and, any one time. And we're going to talk about that uh, mm. more a little later. Yes. Um, I just want to stay with family first because I know your father was a very powerful minister back in the days mm -hmm. and um, he grew from a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all the way to to the boys' cabinet. Eh? Yes. And he was seen as being responsible for delivering the Luya vote in those days. Mm -hmm. Are you a chip of that old block. Well, I am. I am my father's son. Tell me more that's, about that. That's the fact of the matter. Um, and uh, I can tell you that uh, it is true that uh, he was a powerful politician um, in, in, uh, during his time. Uh, that uh, The way politics was handled was different. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, we were largely under one party state. Uh, in those days. That's right. Uh, but now we are in a multi-party uh, system. Communication is uh, much more robust in, in, in society. Uh, the demographic uh, demographics are very different than they were at that time. Yeah. So he played his role. Um, and I can tell you I'm playing my role uh, today very effectively mm. in uh, connecting with the uh, the people of Western Kenya mm -hmm. and indeed uh, Kenyans in other parts of our country. Yeah, the reason I ask that question on character and, and, and I want you to respond to this before we, 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 we take a break mm -hmm. um, is because the character question yes. arises from time to time. Yeah. And you're right, some people actually describe you as always oh, a very gentle person, very, very measured yeah. and um, you know, he, he does not scare away uh, uh, the extreme elements in rival camps. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But others use very harsh adjectives to, 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 mm -hmm. to, to describe you. Broadly speaking, broadly speaking, mm -hmm. most people are agreed on your fiscal policies. Mm -hmm. But there are those who feel that to realize economic growth, it requires some radical muscle. And that's what I want you to speak to before we take a break. My friend, yeah. I was Minister for Finance at the age of 33. The country was in the doldrums. There were very, very serious structural and governance issues that had taken us to the bottom of the whole. I came out and I stood out and I transformed this country. I liberalized this country and the economy of this country to the extent that I was rated as a minister for finance in Africa who had presided over the most elaborate and rapid liberalization of the economy. And along the way, I closed financial institutions that were not meeting the requirements. Along the way, I got a lot of changes brought into this country. That was a question of diplomacy and the way you think and the way you present your logic. Matters like this is not about the brawn. It's about the brain. And I want to tell uh, people is that, that even if you have to bring discipline, okay, and in fact, if you go back, the first budget I presented as Minister for Finance talked about resilience and discipline. And that is what we have lost. That is we have lost. lost our discipline in the management of public affairs. You talk and it has put us into trouble. And this trouble. needs somebody to bring us back to the rail. You, you, you talk about brain brawn, mm -hmm. and whenever the question of the big C comes up, corruption, mm -hmm. 
you're dealing with people who are smart. So why is it that the, the poll is so high, you know, in regards to... Let, you let, me, let me tell you why I talk about brawn and yeah. rather than... Uh, I mean brain rather than brawn. Yeah. Let's take the hub of corruption mm. at that time. It was something called import licensing, yeah. exchange controls. Yeah. The moment we eliminated that yeah. and we were able to have a unified exchange rate, yeah. we swept away a very good and large chunk of corruption activities, rent-seeking stages. So we need systems that will work. Now, to fight corruption, we cannot fight it if you're in constant conflict with the judiciary. You cannot fight corruption if you underfund the judiciary. You underfund the ethics and corruption body. You underfund the DPP. You underfund the DCI. And I can tell you the figures. When you give the courts 18 billion shillings, you give uh, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution roughly 3 billion. You give ESEC roughly 3 billion. You give DCI roughly 5 billion. All right? And then you give Parliament 40 billion. Straight in balance. Straight in balance. Yeah. Yet these are the institutions that are supposed to sort out these things. The big C. So why don't we take a short break? Eh? Because I just yeah. want to remind our viewers, we were asking a question. We yes. were asking them whether they would, you know, make you vote or not vote. What exactly would make them vote or not vote for Musalia Mudavadi as the fifth president? Just send your comments on our social media platforms that are displayed on your screen. And when we come back, the second part of this interview with Honorable Musalia Mudavadi. Stay with us. What does this number mean to you? A pack leader? A winner? Or just a number? To us, it means freshness, boldness, vibrancy and heritage. That's why at KBC Channel One, we make it easier for you to pop up your family entertainment to a fresh, exciting and colorful bouquet. If you have been in contact with someone who is suspected or has tested positive for COVID-19, self-quarantine for 14 days and call 719 for help. Self-quarantine restricts movements and the spread of the disease and protects your family, friends and community from being infected. During self-quarantine, you are advised to stay in a separate room, disinfect surfaces and clothing with appropriate disinfectant, avoid sharing household items including utensils, towels and beddings, do not receive visitors, wear an appropriate face mask if you must be around other people. COVID-19 is preventable. Protect yourself, family and the community. This message has been brought to you by the Government of Kenya and its partners. Malaria ni ugonjwa hatari sana unaoua watu wengi hapa Kenya. Japo kuko na corona, hatari ya malaria bado iko. Mtoto huyu alikuwa na joto jingi, kutetemeka, kuumwa na viungo na uchovu. Alikimbizwa hospitali ya umma ambako sheria za COVID-19 huzingatiwa na ni salama kwa shughuli ya upimaji. Vipimo vilionyesha kuwa ana malaria na papo hapo daktari akampa dawa za malaria na kumshauri azimalize na ili kujikinga wawe wakilala ndani ya neti iliyotibiwa. Malaria husambazwa na mbu. Walio hatarini ni watoto wa chini ya miaka tano na akina mama wajawazito. Kupimwa na kutibiwa ni bure katika hospitali zote za umma. Usisahau adui malaria. Zero malaria huanza na mimi. Chukua jukumu leo. Komesha malaria. Ujumbe huu umelitoa kwenu na Wizara ya Afya. Life is uncertain. Even if your regular income has been affected, you can still talk to your insurance service provider and convert your policy to a paid-up policy. You will not be required to pay further premiums and your insurer will still be liable for the benefits payable under this option. Now you know. IRA. Promoting insurance. Protecting the insured. Kupata skiza tionia usifadaishwe, dial star 811. Star 815 hash.
usifadhaishwe na mafanikio ya wengine ukihisi kwamba maisha yako hayana maana kumbuka wengi huzungumzia tu mafanikio yao na si changamoto walizozipitia na ni mara ngapi walianguka tia bd muda wako utafika ili kupata sikiza tune hiyo ya usifadhaishwe kwa simu yako dial star 811 star 815 hash star 811 star 815 Actually, always uh, compare the two HIV with vitiligo. These people go through a lot. Their self-esteem is very low. So we just wanted to raise their self-esteem and create awareness. Like they can be part of the community. Nibahati bahati tena yo. Thank you so much. You know, uh, every team bahati, every fan that is watching me on Grapevine. You know, this is bahati tena Iceland's most beloved. The ghetto president and you're watching Grapevine on KBC. Mika huko kula stereza kula kinu hivyo huko nyumbani majukumu ya lakungoi. Mimi naja lea naja. Mm, Heri kuda na jistiri kwake. Kuliko kuku wana changataka kwa watu mwisha kakiuso mboga. Ikiwa wewe huku shuulika. Hata na hawa watoto wadadako. Leo mimi nita kuhusisha vipi na masala ya kwa wewe. Maya, mamdogo hawezi kukaa hapa. Hawezi amutaki akae hapa. Na ukifukuzwa kule nyumbani, usije kunibishia hodi huko kwangu. Ubishire. What does this number mean to you? leader a winner or just a number to us it means freshness boldness vibrancy and heritage that's why at KBC Channel 1 we make it easier for you to pop up your family entertainment to a fresh exciting and colorful bouquet Hii hey. ngombe ni yako. Hey, asante. Hii <laughs> ngombe itatoa masuwa mengi kabisa. Sasa shita ya school fees imeisha. Jen. Chukua hii. Hebu nikuulize. Hii maneno nasikia ya pima ya elimu inaweza kuwa namna gani mtu anachukua process ya kuchukua insurance kabla yote? Mm. Ni rahisi. Hata niko na kabla ya gari yangu. Kwanza mm. unajaza proposal form kama hii mm -hmm. na uijaze wewe mwenyewe. Na kama haujui kusoma mm. uijaze na mtu unayemwamini. Okay. Hakikisha ile majibu umepatiana mm. ni sahihi mm. na ni ya kweli. Mm. Pia mm. thibitisha insurance cover imeangalia masirahi yako. Mm. Na usiwahi sign proposal form mm. ambayo haijaandikwa kitu chochote. Mm. Pia mm. ukumbuke kujitolea photocopy yako. Oh, sasa wacha ni answer hiyo process. By the way, mm. ukisubmit hiyo proposal form mm. Uhakikishe umepatiwa policy document. Uisome na uielewe. Hiyo ndiyo thibitisho ya kuwa unabiva. <laughs> Ujume huu umeletwa kwako na IRA. Get the VIP access to the best shows on KBC Channel 1. We have something different, something special to spice you up. Get ready for new, exciting and captivating dramas. Nikifa muzapumzika. Movies. I love the smell. Comedy. I went to the popos. Drama. Please assault the queen in my house, in my presence. News. Sports and so much more. Do the things that make you happy on KBC Channel 1. Kupata skiza tune hii waibrania 138 dial star 811 star 963 hash Yesu Kristo ni yule yule jana leo na hata milele waibrania 13 mstari wa 8 
ili kupata sikiza tune hiyo ya Waibrania 13 nane dial star 811 star 963 hash star 811 star 963 hash quiero amarte de una forma diferente de otro modo months ago I prevented Amaya from dying and then now she saved my life. Apparently Chapas is a a place where your lives came together. Don't you realize that if you do that you're going to lose your son? Listen, I don't care. I would rather do that than let him die. If you're afraid and paranoid, then I'll take her away from you just like you did. You can just take it easy. Because I know that I'm not that desperate. This is it. The wait is over. The rally drivers are here. Three days to go to the biggest sporting event this year. The WRC Safari Rally. Catch all the drama and action of the Safari Rally live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 24th to 27th June. This event will also be covered live on KBC Radio Taifa and streamed live on www.kbc.co.ke. Don't miss out. Rally in the wild with KBC Channel One, your true sports partner. Welcome back We're with Honorable <coughs> Musalia Mudavadi, ANC leader on perspective. Um, as you finish your point, before we took the break, I just want you to tie it in with what your rescue plan would be. Um, because some people are worrying that Kenya has become a debt treadmill and that we are in euro bondage. So as you're finishing your point, you can also tackle that very quickly so that yes I think uh, Tom let us be very clear uh, the country is broke we do not have that extra money we are broke and this is why stringent measures are coming in to freeze even salary increments of public servants to the year 2025 mm -hmm. all right so what is happening is that the government is now borrowing to pay debt mm -hmm. and you remember I talked about physical discipline mm -hmm. we are financing our issues through a deficit mechanism physical discipline needs to be restored so that we have a better balance between what we raise through taxes and our public expenditure mm -hmm. otherwise we cannot continue going on like this the euro bond that is being taken in uh, the, the latest uh, if you look at it um, it came out but conveniently the interest rate issue was not being flagged but we are now borrowing again at close to 6.8 percent mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. and the maturity period will be 2034 okay so we are in that situation so borrowing uh, to pay loan borrowing uh, to pay loan right are we exposed? I mean, basically the government is fullizering at the top yeah and that fullizer bug has even got into Mananchi, yeah. who is also fullizering sri lanka are we exposed we are exposed Tell we me. are exposed. We are exposed that. as a country because if we are not able to meet even the huge installments that are due in June, yeah. then we can be called into default. And when you're called into default, certain things happen. Maybe your embassies in certain countries may be attached and so forth. Or maybe uh, assets like the Kenyan Airways planes could be uh, uh, impounded in other uh, destinations. So it is a very serious issue. Uh, and debt also translates into higher tax. You know, Mwananchi is crying of heavy taxation. Yeah, when I was coming here, I it, spoke to a gentleman called it, Karaoke. He's, yes. he's matatu. He's almost being auctioned. Why? But, yes. He cannot repay the loan. And, and, and he's telling me mm -hmm. that he plans to join Colgate Palmolive 
Cadbury in Egypt because they shipped off earlier because of high costs of energy. And so what do you tell Kalifu? High cost of energy, high taxation. Yeah. All right. Let me tell you, uh, karaoke needs to make a good decision yeah. come 2022. Yeah. We need to have a leadership yeah. that will focus on reviving the economy yeah. and make sure the economy works for all. Let me tell you, I met the chairman of uh, the SMEs yeah. in Kenya, yeah. and I even met the chairman of the Boda Boda yeah. uh, in this country. And uh, what did they tell a, you? The a Boda Boda gentleman, a, a gentleman you? called uh, uh, Kimani Wanduthi. Yeah. What did he tell you? Let me tell you. Yeah. He told me that it is just impossible to survive. The fuel costs have gone up. The tax on the motorbikes has gone up. It is not tenable. And, and, and we are going to start seeing high insecurity resurfacing. Yeah. High levels of insecurity resurfacing. Yeah. You so walk, your walk into the streets now yeah. uh, at 6, uh, 6 uh, uh, p.m., yeah. Certain areas where you would stay freely and move freely up to 9 a.m., yeah. you're now disappearing very fast because mm. the guys who are starved of opportunity mm. elsewhere are now trying to survive by stealing. And, 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 and they're listening to you tonight because mm. the eye of the nation is on KBC tonight. Yes. Their perspective. And they're listening to you, and you sound like you have joined them to complain about this i've not of complained affairs. i'm, I'm yeah. telling them that this is an opportunity yeah. to get a leader who understands that this requires attention and i want us to dialogue as a nation let me tell you there's a phrase yeah. um in in, in uh, the kikuyu language mm -hmm. they call it the mm -hmm. meaning basically mm -hmm. this is a tradition which calls for sober serious dialogue Mm -hmm. Because we are at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. Kenyans need to engage in that serious dialogue. Mm -hmm. We need a thing, then got to worry a moment mm -hmm. in our country. In our country. So that the critical issues can be put on the table mm -hmm. and we move away from a lot of the things we are seeing. Yeah. For instance, if you ask me, yeah. there was so much gusto on the BBI. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good dividends within the BBI. Mm -hmm. But when you ask yourself, are we putting the same gusto? in ensuring that there's employment. Mm -hmm. Are we putting the same gusto to fight corruption? Yeah. So tell me what a Mudavadi presidency would do, because you've mentioned a youth empowerment uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Look at the manufacturing sector. I mean, uh, how can they achieve the potential of being a source of employment when imports from China, for example, you know, continue unabated? How do we repair this? These, these are the questions. Who are we creating jobs for? Yeah. And it's a question of us dialoguing and focusing on the right issues. I've had an opportunity to talk to, uh, I, was, I was doing a, a Zoom conference with about 350 mm -hmm. members of the Chamber of Commerce, yeah. chaired by uh, the president of the, com uh, the chamber, yeah. Ngatia. Yeah. And we talked to so many people. Yeah. This issue is alive. Yeah. Uh, the issue of how uh, the counterfeits were being tackled yeah. is alive. Yeah. Um, all these things need to be looked at yeah. soberly. Yeah. And I can tell you, yeah. if we work together yeah. as a people, yeah. we can resolve this. We things. can hack it. But you keep talking of dialogue, eh? as if we don't know what the problems are. We know the problems. What we no, need you is see, pragmatic. You see, you see why I talk of dialogue? Yeah. Uh, because you cannot win these things yeah. sometimes by using the, the club or the button. Yeah. People must understand what action is necessary and the consequences of their actions. Yeah. We must, our constitution calls for participation yeah. in major policy decisions. Mm -hmm. Can we look at each other in the eye yeah. without blinking and mm -hmm. say that we have been seeing sufficient public participation yeah. uh, with the arms of government, say the treasury mm -hmm. and the ministry of commerce and so forth yeah. in dealing with the issues that affect uh, our people. Yeah. So if my, I hear my you. hunch is that I don't think there is sufficient dialogue. Okay. Yeah. And therefore, policies are being put in place yeah. that are harming yeah. the ordinary businessman. They are making it difficult for business to for grow. the local business. So sometimes, do you get a sense that we focus more on the politics, the coalition buildings, the one Kenyans, the NASA rebirth, and so on, at the expense of governance Absolutely. and leadership? Absolutely. So what do you prescribe? Absolutely. 
I think if we get the right leadership in place, mm -hmm. we can minimize mm -hmm. the time that we, cons we put on these other issues. Okay. Yeah, let us be realistic. Okay. Uh, we are putting too much time yeah. on politics of mudslinging yeah. and trying to outdo each other, okay. as opposed to focusing on the issues that I'm talking about. Okay, because you're running for presidency, let's talk mm -hmm. a bit about the health mm -hmm. area. Kenyatta National Hospital, mm -hmm. at one time, a running hospital. Mm -hmm. But today, when you go there, dilapidated infrastructure. Uh, in fact, there's a sense in which people feel have lost trust. Are we funding the Indian health sector or the South African health sector? Well, I will say something about Kenyatta Hospital. I visited it recently, and I can tell you that there has been some progress. Let us be honest here. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you go to the new wing and all that, you yeah. can come across some of the best uh, quality mm -hmm. uh, high dependency units and ICE units. Yeah. So there's some progress. progress. We should not uh, say that all is, yeah. is bad. Fif but truly, mm -hmm. you raise an issue yeah. that the, the connection between the hospital insurance fund yeah. and how it is reaching out to the ordinary person yeah. There's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Yes, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to mm -hmm. be done there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, as we come to the close of this interview, and I mm -hmm. just wish we had a lot of time. Yes. 20 minutes is not yes. a really long time. I wish so too. Yeah, but, uh, just, just some quick thoughts. Atwali yes. made some comments on no BBI, no election. Your thoughts? My Very quickly, as we come uh, to the close. My friend, we are not living in a constitutional vacuum. Mm -hmm. We have a constitution. Uh, I have said I want to be able to serve the people of Kenya yeah. and to ensure that constitutionalism shall be followed. Yeah. So it is so clear yeah. that whatever we do must fall within the constitutional the constitution. requirements. Yeah. So anything outside that yeah. uh, is not tenable. Yeah. Yes. Your thoughts on uh, the question of the six judges? Because you want to be president. Yes. These are issues that in the event you... Yeah? It's, it's, it's a question of what the law provides. Okay. The constitution, here's a, here's a situation where mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing uh, the procedurally yeah. they should be appointed. Yeah. The appointing authority yeah. says that there is a problem, yeah. but there is a mechanism yeah. through the judicial, of that. Uh, uh, judicial service commission okay. where this thing can be resolved. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank you so much for coming through. You're my first guest. Yes. And uh, time. Time. This thing called time. Yes. This time, thing called time. 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 <laughs> but I hope... Uh, but, but one thing. Yeah. Uh, let me Very just, quickly so that we let, wrap up. Let me yeah. just tell uh, the people out there, yeah. especially the, the ordinary yeah. uh, voter yeah. like yeah. myself. Yeah. Maybe in forwards. Yeah. Let, once the IBC starts yeah. this process of ensuring yeah. that people register, yeah. I want to plead to yeah. the Kenyans. Yeah. If you want to make a difference, yeah. register yeah. and make that difference yeah. in 2022. Thank you. And I will be on the ballot. Thank you. And I want to be part of them when they are making this change. Thank you very much. And we wish you well in your quest for the presidency. Okay. ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi. We will take a short break. When we come back, remember we were asking you, what would make you vote or not vote for Musalia Mudavadi as the fifth president? The social media platforms are on your screen. Speak to us. Let us know what your thoughts are. When we come back, we will be reading for you some of those comments. But coming up uh, with the day's business, Cynthia Nyamai on the other side. Cynthia. Thank you, Tom. Welcome to business, KBC Business. The Insurance Regulatory Authority is set to start licensing micro-insurance providers in efforts aimed at increasing uptake of insurance products by the masses. IRA Chief Executive Officer Godric Kiptoum says this will go a long way in promoting financial inclusion given the low uptake of insurance. According to Fin Access Household Survey 2019, only 2% of Kenyans used insurance as a solution to deal with shocks. Of course, uh, what we know is that many people have not thought in the past that they were insurable. But with these products that reach into many more people, it will be affordable. This is attributed to, among others, diminished purchase power among the lower middle income households who are more than 50% of the population. Of course, the average uh, income for, for, for this country is about $2,000 per annum, but that doesn't mean that everybody is on that uh, scale. 
that's an average scale. Many people would uh, li be living beyond, below two, three dollars per day, and we expect that those people now will have products that they can be able to afford, that will take care of their risks, be it medical, be it health. Low-income earners keep off insurance and opt for traditional, inadequate risk mitigation mechanisms such as social networks to meet spiraling medical, school and funeral costs through Harambees. To correct this, the Insurance Regulatory Authority plans to start licensing micro-insurance firms. These products will reach many more people, increase penetration, and also, most importantly, uh, get to the rich and meet the needs of, of, of the low-income persons. And uh, just for information is that the authority is licensing micro-insurance, which will be another class of insurance that will be targeting the low end uh, of the population and giving them uh, insurance cover that will range from both general classes of insurance and life insurance. The IRA chief executive officer says formal risk management solutions such as insurance is a solution. The Insurance Regulatory Authority has awarded 1.25 million shillings each to three startups under its insurance innovation sandbox dubbed Bima Lab Accelerator Program. The three startups, I Care, Chamasure, and Sprout Insure, were recognized for developing solutions that would increase access in the undeserved markets by use of artificial intelligence, blockchain, and telematics. What we are doing is we are targeting uh, groups in informal uh, businesses and enabling them to pull together through our uh, AI-powered app. Chamashua has created a peer-to-peer micro-insurance and saving platform allowing Chamas to access insurance products. Regina Manyara reporting for KBC Prime Edition. Now in agriculture, coffee producers say the 3 billion shillings cherry revolving fund is not enough to adequately finance coffee activities and want the kitty increased to at least 5 billion shillings. The Kenya Coffee Producers Association says the directive to restrict farmers to only borrow from the cherry revolving fund is not sustainable as it denies farmers their right to choose their preferred financiers. After eight coffee factories were on the verge of being auctioned because of a 163 million shillings debt, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya issued a directive stopping millers and marketing agents from advancing loans to farmers. Munya instead directed farmers to borrow from the 3 billion shillings coffee cherry fund. However, the Kenya Coffee Producers Association says the directive, which is now anchored in the Coffee Bill 2021, is not sustainable as it denies farmers their right to choose their preferred financiers and the 3 billion shillings fund is not enough. At the current national coffee production, averaging 40 metric tons, a minimum of 5.6 billion is, is needed if farmers are advanced at 20, per, I mean 20 shillings per kilogram of cherry. The producers are calling for the suspension of the Capital Markets Regulation 2020, saying the Capital Markets Authority has no structure to support coffee trading. With the experience that we had with them the, uh, the last year, that is 2020, they seem not to have been prepared, not to even understand the, the coffee business, and comparing the coffee business with the, the shares that are normally traded. The farmers want representatives at the Coffee Research Foundation Coffee Board of Kenya and the Nairobi Coffee Exchange be elected by farmers. The farmers are calling for harmonization of the two coffee bills at the National Assembly and the Senate, and stakeholders consulted in drafting a comprehensive coffee bill that benefits farmers. Benson Yoba reporting for KBC Prime Time. That is all from the business desk. I am Cynthia Nyamai. Let's catch up now with news from the sports desk. Oh, good evening once again. My name is Richard Munga with today's sports. Now, reigning World Rally Champion Sebastian Auger of France has said his plan is to continue showing a splendid performance as the sixth round of the WRC Safari Rally uh, kicks off this Thursday in Naivasha. Auger made the sentiments after arriving in the country last night. And the sixth round of the WRC Safari Rally Championship will kick off this Thursday to Sunday in Naivasha with 58 rally drivers from all parts of the world competing for top honors. 
reigning world champion Sebastian Ogier, who landed in the country last night, is eager yearning for glory in the global showpiece. I'm very excited to be there because uh, the, the roads you have here are definitely very different from what you have in Europe and uh, also the nature I'm excited to see. So, yeah, I think uh, this, uh, this week is going to be very interesting for us. Yeah, I had a look a little bit, not of everything, because I believe that the most important going to be to have a good look during the Ricky, uh, where for sure the nose going to make a, like always, big difference in rally. But I think the speed maybe going to be a bit less than we are used to. Meanwhile, Old Tarnak is determined to follow a different strategy for the reminder of the FIA World Rally Championship season. Yeah, looking forward actually, and, and uh, definitely a very special event in the championship. I've seen just some videos and footages, but actually not so much. So uh, obviously, yeah, when I was a kid, I, I saw some footage from from DV when uh, when WRC was last time. Here. The Hyundai Motorsport Superstar will compete in the WRC Safari Rally Kenya, being his first ever race on African soil. The 2019 World Champion lies 57 points adrift of Championship leader Sebastian Oja, with seven of the 12 rounds remaining. The Estonian lost a comfortable lead at Rally Italia when he hit a rock and ripped the right rear wheel from his Hyundai i20. Frederick Moki for Channel One Sport. Meanwhile, Team Kenya to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics started checking into the final Olympics pre-departure bubble camp at Kasarani. Starting today, the 21st of June until the 24th of this month, rugby women's team Lonesses was the first team to check into the camp, while Taekwondo team is set to follow suit tomorrow. The final team to get into the camp will be rugby men, that is Shuja, who will check in on Thursday. Women volleyball team Malkia strikers and boxing team are already in camp at the Kenyatta University and Kasarani Stadium respectively. The teams will reside in their respective camps up until they start leaving for Kurumi City, with the first team scheduled to leave on the 8th of next month. Well, now that's all the time we have for sports, but remember to visit our official YouTube page, uh, that is KPC Sports, for the sports updates as well as a few features. Oh, well, that does it for me tonight. I'm Richard Munger. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Thank you, Richard Munga, for that update. Well, before we let you go, our opinion poll question was, what would make you vote? or not vote for Musali Amudavadi as the fifth president. The verdict is out. We have Kamawi Narok saying, yes, I would vote for him. He's a safe pair of hands, but he needs to work on his decisiveness. Eunice from Kamulu says, yes, he can make a good president. He's sober. And we have Patrick saying no with a one, with one word, indecisive. Mm -hmm interesting views there but of course Tom you know KBC is relaunching today yeah. and we have a lot of comments you know Kenyans are so excited maybe I can just go through a few of them we have Kibet who's saying that Kibet Bernard on Twitter good to see KBC roaring back waiting to see the legends back on our screens and of course the legend is still already <laughs> here and then the day is here we cannot possibly wait and keep calm to see kbc bounce back thank you so much and then i look forward to seeing Catherine Casavoli back on our screens i also saw your fan tom boyer is firm sure of himself deep aware of his surroundings welcome back home thank and you. welcome thank back you. home thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs> absolutely and yeah. that brings us to the end of prime edition this monday night Thank you so much for watching. I'm Purity Museo. Anne Wangeshi has been our sign language interpreter tonight. Good night and God bless. And I trust the last one hour or so was worth your while. My name is Tom Boyer from the capital city of Nairobi, Kenya. Good night.
What does this number mean to you? A pack leader? A winner? Or just a number? To us, it means freshness, boldness, vibrancy and heritage.